Hi guys, Drea from Aloha Plant Life here, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about pest control. It is that time of year when our plants are starting to wake up, and unfortunately that is also the time of year that the bugs start to wake up, and you're going to potentially start to notice more pest issues on your plants. I myself have actually just discovered a bit of a spider mite infestation. You guys know how much I hate spider mites. They are the bane of my existence. But I have discovered quite the infestation on multiple plants in multiple different areas of my home, and that is usually not how it happens for me. But I did just recently figure out why it happened that way this time, and I'll get into that more a little bit later on. But we are gonna be going over some of the most common store-bought pesticides that are available for use for you at home on your house plants. And I have used all of these, so I am gonna be basing this purely on my personal experience, and then some of the more scientific stuff is gonna be based on research, not only on the manufacturer's websites and what they say the product does, but also on some other scientific sites that explain the ingredients in the products and how they work against the pests. So for each of these products, there are six main things that I am gonna be covering for you today. One, what are the key active ingredients in that product that are actually working to eliminate your pests? Two, what bugs does it actually work against? Three, is it safe for your pets? Since I know a lot of us out there have pets and plants, Four, is it safe for all of your plants or is it potentially harmful to some of them? Five, how exactly does it even work? And six, and perhaps most importantly, does it actually work? So let's head right into the first and what I think is the most common one right now, the one that everybody talks about, and that is good old neem oil. So this is the concentrated version of neem oil, but you can buy it in a ready-made spray as well. And neem oil is derived from the seed kernels of a neem tree. And within that oil, there are these four ingredients that I am not even going to begin to try to pronounce for you today that act as the active ingredients within neem oil. Now, as far as what bugs it works on, there is a giant, huge, long list within the back panel of this that I'm going to list up here on screen for you so that you can see what it works against. But the big thing to keep in mind is that neem oil is primarily effective against soft-bodied pests. Now when it comes to your pets, neem oil is technically pet safe, but only if it is not being ingested in large quantities by your pets. That is something to keep in mind for all of the ones that I say are pet safe today. If your pet somehow bites through this and chugs it down, that is a whole nother story. What we mean by pet safe is if you're spraying this in your bathroom, in your shower, in your tub, on your plants, and your pet's around, is it gonna hurt your pet? No, it's not gonna hurt your pet. If your pet nibbles on a leaf of a pet safe plant that you have sprayed this on, is it gonna hurt your pet? No. If your pet eats that entire plant that you've sprayed this on, that might be a little bit of a questionable situation. But in general, what we mean is if they get this on them while you're spraying them, or if they breathe it in, you know, a little bit of the residual while you're spraying, it is not going to harm them. So just keep that in mind. That's what I mean by pet safe when we're going along through all of these. Now, as far as is it safe for all of your plants? I am going to be giving you my personal experience, like I said, and I have heard this from other people as well. The answer here is no. And if you watched my recent Is It Really Dead video, you will know that neem oil is kind of what took out my white fusion Palathea, which has thankfully made a full recovery and comeback. But neem oil is an oil, and oil is suffocating. So if you're getting too much on your plant, your plant is potentially not going to be able to breathe. If it is a plant with very sensitive leaves, it can potentially cause damage to the leaves or kill the leaves off. So I always would recommend testing it on one leaf first, just from my personal experience, and make sure that it's okay. Give it a 24 to 48 hour period. If everything's looking good, then fine, spray the rest of the leaves. So as for how neem oil actually works, this is where I think people get confused and there's some misinformation out there. A lot of people say that it smothers the bugs by coating them. That's actually not technically true. And yes, maybe it does happen that way with some of the bugs, but that's not actually how it's intended to work, and that's not the primary way it works. For neem oil to really work the way it's intended, it has to be ingested by the pest. It then interrupts and interferes with their hormone system, which screws up their reproductive cycle so that they're no longer laying eggs, they're no longer reproducing, and that's how the bugs are eradicated. Now, because it does have to be ingested, this means that the bugs that you're trying to treat must be the type of bugs that are eating the plant. If they are not the type of bug that is eating the plant, they're not going to ingest the neem oil and it's not going to work. But now to the biggest question, which is, does it actually work? 
You guys, I highly do not recommend using neem oil as a pest treatment. Treatment being the key word. Neem oil, in my opinion, really works better as a pest preventative. There are qualities to neem oil that deter pests from wanting to get on your plant. The smell might be one of the big ones that deters them because it certainly deters me from wanting to use the product as well. I do not appreciate how it smells, but the bugs also don't appreciate how it smells or the things that are in it. So I really think it's better used if you don't have pests to, as a once a month spray down preventative treatment to make sure that pests are not wanting to get on your plants. I do not think it is the most effective treatment for any type of pest. Once again, this is based on my experience with the product. I have never seen it actually take care of getting rid of any pests that I've used it on. So most common frequently used product, neem oil, not my number one recommendation if we're trying to kill pests. Moving on to our next product. This is another one that is comes up a lot. A lot of people try to make their own home versions of this. That's a whole nother thing that I will touch briefly on at the end of this video, but the store-bought version is insecticidal soap. So this is Bonide's insecticidal soap. That was Bonide's neem oil that I was showing you before too. So insecticidal soap. This is another one of those that is primarily just for soft bodied insects. And the primary ingredient in insecticidal soap are potassium salts from fatty acids. That sounds like overly scientific, but that's what the primary active ingredient is. And so once again, this works on a variety of bugs. I'm gonna list them up here on screen for you because there's just a lot of them. And once again, this is pet safe, assuming your pet is not ingesting a ton of it or a ton of the plant that it has been sprayed on. Once again, as for is this safe for all types of plants, that is a resounding no. I actually have found this one caused more harm to more of my plants than the neem oil. This isn't oil based, so at least it's not a question of is it too much oil coating the plant where the plant can't potentially breathe correctly, right? This one is just something about the ingredients and it just does not sit well with some plants and I've had more plants have trouble with this and lose a ton of leaves because of it than any other plants. So definitely test this one on at least one leaf, wait 24 to 48 hours, make sure the leaf's still looking okay before you do your whole entire plant. And I know it's gonna be hard to do that because you're gonna see the pests on the plant and you wanna spray that whole plant down right then and there and kill as many bugs as you can in one go, don't do it. Don't risk the life of your whole plant. Just try to be patient, try not to think about the bugs and do the test first. Now, as far as how insecticidal soap works, I probably should have mentioned this as the start of this video, you guys, but the majority of these treatments, they have to come into contact with the actual pest. That can make it very difficult because you've got to spray every single inch of every plant in order to make sure that you're potentially hitting every single insect with the product that you're using. But this one in particular, has to come into contact, that is how it works. The active ingredient I talked about basically goes into the cell membranes of the pests and starts messing with them and interfering with their cell functions until they basically just die. Now, the other thing that I am not a huge fan of here, and if I'm being honest with you, I have the same issue with the neem oil that we talked about before, is that this is not going to do anything for hard eggs. If the pest in question lays hard enough eggs, the eggs will still survive, which means you're now having to treat that plant multiple times, trying to figure out at what life cycle those pests were in when you started treating it and making sure that you're hitting again right when those eggs hatch before they have time to get big enough and mature enough to produce even more eggs. So in my mind, that makes things a little bit more complicated. Is it doable? Yes. Do I really want to deal with it? No. But that's just a fact. With this insecticidal soap, you are not gonna kill any hard eggs, and they state that very clearly up front on their website in their information pages for this product. So that's how it works now to does it work? I have not really had much success with insecticidal soap either. I do think it's more effective for sure against killing pests than the neem oil, but it has just not sat well with too many of my plants. They have lost too many leaves that I'm just hesitant to use it on anything anymore. So not my favorite, just being honest here, but we are gonna get to some that work, I promise. I promise we're gonna get to some that I feel like work. So let's move on to the next one, which I feel like is the most common one I hear people on YouTube recommend in their videos using. And so I actually tried it for that reason because I had heard it recommended by a lot of other YouTubers and that is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. So Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, this does come 
either in a ready-to-go spray like this, or it can come in a little jar like a, the neem oil I showed you where you mix it up yourself into your own spray bottle. But this, once again, is primarily for use on soft bodied pests. This product's active ingredient actually has kind of an interesting backstory to it. It's called spinosad, and there's actually two different types of that in here, A and D, I believe. And this was actually a bacterium that was discovered at an abandoned rum factory on an island in the Caribbean, which now that I think about it, maybe that's why it's called Captain Jack's. So yeah, just a fun, interesting backstory that I found when I was researching this one. And as far as the type of bugs this works on, here is the big old list. And I will go ahead and mention that this does not kill eggs. This will only kill adults and larvae. And this is also made by Bonide. And according to their site, this is pet safe once dry. So for this one, do not be spraying it with your pets around. Don't let them get anywhere near it if it's still wet. But once it's dry, they are claiming that it is 100% pet safe. Now, is it safe for all plants? I have only had a problem with it on one plant, which is better than the previous ones we have talked about. But once again, because I have had a problem on it with one plant, Still gonna recommend you test it on one leaf first before doing the entire plant just to make sure that you're not gonna have a problem. Now, as far as how this works, the spinosids that are in here, once they have been ingested, and that is the key, this is another one of the products where the bugs have to ingest this product for it to work. Therefore, it is only gonna work on the types of insects that actually eat the plant. But once they have eaten it, it is gonna make them basically lose their appetite, I guess is how I would best describe it, but it's gonna get them to the point where they're gonna stop feeding. And when they stop feeding, they then starve to death and they die. It's kind of morbid, you guys. When we start getting into this, it's kind of like, oh, at a certain point, I'm like, I feel kind of bad for the bugs, but sorry, you need to get off my plants. But it does not kill eggs. So this is another one where you're gonna to have to figure out the life cycle of the pest and make sure you're retreating at the appropriate times to get those eggs once they've hatched before they're old enough to start making more bugs. Now, does this one that is highly recommended by a lot of other YouTubers actually work? I'm gonna say maybe. And the reason I'm gonna throw out a maybe is because I feel like it's kind of hard to say when I have to wait till the bugs have eaten it and I know it doesn't work on their eggs and did I get them at the right time in the life cycle for my repeat sprays? So when I've been using this one, I've actually been alternating using it and the next product that I'm gonna show you. So it's kind of hard for me to say if it was both products worked, one product worked, one didn't, because I've really only ever used this one in conjunction with that other product, primarily because I was worried about not getting the eggs killed. But a problem that I do honestly have with this one is that it runs off very quickly. So I'm kind of like, is enough staying on there for there to be residual for the bugs to actually eat? Because with the oil-based products, they're sticking really well. And with the insecticidal soap, because it's got that soapiness, that stays on the leaves for a longer period of time. Whereas this one, I feel like I'm spraying it on and it's just running right off. So I don't know, I'm going with maybe. I just would recommend doing kind of an alternating treatment if you're gonna use this one. Like I said that I've been doing with the next product that I'm gonna show you. So let's go ahead and grab that product. So this product is called Indol. And once again, just like Captain Jack's and the neem oil, you can buy it in this ready to spray bottle or you can buy the concentrate and mix it up yourself. Now, this is a very interesting product. I did actually first decide to start trying this product based on the recommendation of a former YouTuber who now owns their own plant store and they use this on all of their plants that they're bringing into the shop. I feel like that's a pretty solid recommendation right there, but obviously I was going to test it out first before I tell you. And now that I have used it, I have some pros and I have some cons, but let's start off with the active ingredients. Interesting thing about this product Indol, its name kind of is a very accurate description because the reason it ends all bugs is because it's actually a combination of multiple of the products we've already talked about and some ingredients that we have not yet mentioned that bugs do not like. So this actually contains insecticidal soap, it contains neem oil, and it contains pyrethrins. I hope I said that right. That is the active ingredient in this product that is different from all the other products. So this is kind of like a triple threat, if you will, but because it's a triple threat, 
I feel it's a little bit more dangerous and risky. So it does work on a large variety of bugs because obviously every bug we've mentioned before for the insecticidal soap and the neem oil is covered by this product along with perhaps a few more. I'm showing them here for you again. And this product actually will work on both hard bodied and soft bodied insects. But just like everything else, it's gotta come into contact with those insects in order to kill them on the spot. And the neem oil aspect actually does have to be ingested. I feel like the neem oil being included in this product is a little bit more of a, we're going to both treat the pests and prevent the pests from coming back or new pests coming on by including the neem oil. I think it's really more in here as kind of more of a preventative measure than a, we're gonna kill them on the spot because the other ingredients that in this kill direct on contact. Now, I have some bad news for you pet owners. This is not pet safe. And if I'm being honest with you, when you read some of the hazard warnings and directions for use, I don't really think it's people safe either. So definitely make sure you're wearing a mask when you're spraying this one. Ideally, I would spray it outdoors if you can. I know that's not always realistic for us plant owners. So if you are spraying it in your bathroom, try and maybe get it in an enclosed shower space so it's not kind of going everywhere, but definitely wear a mask. And I will tell you guys, this one smells kind of weird to me. It's not as off-putting to me as the scent of neem oil, but it's just kind of, it almost, you can almost tell by the way it smells that it's got harsher stuff in it that is the reason that it's not pet safe and not exactly people safe. So just keep that in mind. Now, as far as is it safe for your plants? I'm gonna go with a resounding, not all of them, not even remotely. This one has actually given my plants more, that have had a reaction to it, more significant problems. Like they've lost more leaves. I've been more concerned about, oh my gosh, did this spray potentially kill my plant? It has not actually killed any of my plants, but you can tell by the way some plants react to it, that it is a much stronger, much harsher product. And for how it works, we've already discussed the neem oil aspects of what's in it and the insecticidal soap aspects, but those pyrethrins, the way that they work is they attack the nervous system of the pest and basically paralyze them. They can't go anywhere, they can't eat, they can't do anything, and now there's no more pests. So that sounds pretty effective to me, but the big question is, does it actually work? Yes, it works, you guys. I'm not gonna lie, it works. And it works in fewer treatments from what I've experienced than the other ones. It is, does have that oil in there, so it helps coat it. However, I have one huge issue with this product, and that is that it specifically, unlike all the other products that we've talked about, those state you've got to spray every inch of the surface to runoff. Now, when we say to runoff, what does that mean? That means your plant better be dripping like from every surface, excess product down onto your shower floor, your tub floor, your patio outside, wherever you're treating your plant. And that makes sense because the majority of these products we've been talking about, like I said, they need to come into contact with the bugs. So you're gonna wanna be spraying that plant down to the point of runoff so that you're making sure you're getting every crevice, every potential hiding spot for any kind of pest. This product does state that you need to coat all the surfaces to make sure that you're coming into contact with all of the bugs, but it specifically says, do not spray to the point of runoff. I don't know how I am going to ever be effectively able to cover every little bit of surface where a pest may be, spraying it with this and not have it come to the point of runoff. It's really hard to do, I've tried. I get a little runoff every time I use this product. And the only thing I could think for potentially why they're stating for it not to go to the state of runoff is that when you do let it go to the state of runoff, it then drips down into the soil. And the more that runs off, the more that's absorbed in the soil. And then when you get enough into the soil, then the roots are now absorbing it and that could be harmful to the plant. That is the only thing that I could think of. And I searched their website all over trying to find an answer and there was nothing that said specifically why not to spray to the point of runoff, but it's a little bit of a red flag to me. So I do try to make sure when I'm spraying it that I'm getting the least amount of runoff as possible. But once again, it's just kind of hard, especially depending on the type of plant. If it's a big broadleaf plant like Monstera back here, that's a lot easier. If it's a tight, compact, like mini, mini leaved plant, that's a little bit more difficult but it had made me just a little bit more concerned about using it. So what I've been doing on some of my plants, I have solely used this when it was a plant where it was easy to apply, like big broad leaves like this. But for my other plants where like my syngoniums, when it's more compact and bushy like that, what I did was I alternated between using this one week and the Captain Jacks the next week because the Captain Jacks to me is way less harsh than this. And so I alternated back and forth between the two and it seemed to do the trick. So that's one thing you could do is alternate back and forth between the one that has like the most power, 
to take care of your plants, but definitely test this on one leaf before you use it on your entire plant. Alternate between this and something a little bit less harsh, in my opinion, like the Captain Jack. So that would be my recommendation if you are gonna go the store-bought pesticide route. Now, in addition to these, there are all kinds of other things that you could use from the store. I'm not gonna get into all of those right now because I feel like these are the main ones that new plant owners research, hear about, go out and try. But I will tell you with the spider mite outbreak that I mentioned that I have recently had in my house, which has been just so annoying. So back to how did the spider mites get spread throughout my house? You're about to see right now that. That fluffy tail that just walked by, because Toby has now come to join us, is how the spider mites got spread. I finally realized that what was going on was Toby was walking underneath my tenanthe that I have in my bedroom, which was the first plant to get the spider mites, or at least the first one I noticed it on. He walks underneath that when he goes into my bedroom and wants to go straight into the bathroom. He drags his tail underneath that plant. So it kind of all pieced together for me after I watched him walk under that plant. I was like, oh my gosh, he likes to lay on the back of the couch, which is where the ficus elasticas are that got spider mites. He likes to get up on the kitchen counter and drink water from the sink, which is next to the money plants, which got spider mites. And the more and more that I went through it, I realized every single plant that had spider mites is one that he likes to lay by or sit by or do something by. And so this little tail was picking up those spider mites off of the tenanthe and spreading them to the other plants. Who would have thought? But now you know to keep an eye on things like that. If you have a plant that you find pests on and you have a pet and you know that pet gets near that plant enough to brush up against it, go immediately check other plants that that pet likes to lay around. But I was so fed up this time. With spider mites, I have found them so difficult to get rid of. If I'm being honest, I just don't even know I always feel like none of the products work, but it's also one of the hardest pests in my opinion because you can't really see them with the naked eye, right? Until you see webs. And at that point, like I've said before, it's an uphill battle. So I actually decided to try something a little different. And I, for the first time, made my own home remedy mix to spray on my plants. And I have to say, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I have sprayed every single plant in my home down with this twice now. And it's also a great preventative for preventing pests from getting on your plants that don't currently have pests. So if you're interested in that remedy, you can check out this video for a step-by-step -step process of how I made it and why it works. But in the meantime, if you've not yet clicked that like and or subscribe button down below, please do so. And thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.